Hi, this is Dory Clark, and you are here for our weekly installment of Better, the Newsweek interview show about how to improve your life. We are here this week with some great friends, Dave Kirpin and Carrie Kirpin. They are the creators of Likeable Media, which was sold earlier this year to a company called Ten Pearls. And they are going to talk about the founding process and how you can create a business that you can sell. And as you think about that arc, how to exit in the right way. This is the dream of so many entrepreneurs and so many people with side gigs. So we want to hear about how we can structure things from the beginning so we don't make any mistakes. Dave and Carrie, welcome. And it's great to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Dory. Absolutely. And we want to hear where you are tuning in from. So please feel free to type your name and your location into the chat box. We want to be able to welcome you. And please feel free to type your questions for Dave and Carrie into the chat box as well. Uh, we want to hear what's on your mind about launching a business and uh, eventually selling it. So Dave and Carrie, just to give people context, your company, Likeable Media, the one that you sold earlier this year, can you talk a little bit about what it what it is, you know, what, what it was, what it is, uh, so people have the context, and, uh, and then we can begin the arc into uh, talking about the sales process. Maybe I'll kick off with, with you, Dave. Can you talk about the, the founding of, of Likeable and, uh, and what, what it did, what it does? Sure. Well, we admittedly had a, a, a unique founding, Dory. Um, I mean, Carrie and I both had a marketing uh, and sales background, and when we got married uh, 15 years ago now, uh, we uh, didn't um, have enough money to afford the kind of very, very large New York City wedding that I, I wanted. Um, but um, Carrie had this brilliant, brilliant idea to get married at a baseball stadium and sell sponsorships to the promo to the uh, game before our wedding. And we ended up partnering with the Brooklyn Cyclones and sold uh, sponsorships to 1-800-Flowers.com and Entenmann's and uh, Smirnoff and a bunch of other uh, vendors that wedding vendors that became our sponsors. We raised about $100,000 in kind for our wedding, $20,000 for charity. And the event was um, a very successful uh, wedding. I got married to the love of my life at a baseball game, but it was also a very successful marketing promotion. Um, and after the wedding, our vendors said, this was amazing. What are you guys doing next? We couldn't get married again, so we started a company. And we started off in the word of mouth marketing space. And as, as uh, social media emerged, we realized that digital word of mouth marketing or social media was a much more efficient way to uh, to market than uh, traditional or guerrilla or face to face uh, uh, marketing. And we built one of the one of the very first independent social media agencies. Um, and I, and the rest is history. I love that. That's that's such a great origin story, and uh, I think really speaks to the amazing creativity of of both of you. So that's fantastic. Now I know as as someone who has been self employed for the past fifteen years, oftentimes we think of ourselves, we think of our businesses as an extension of ourselves. And I can imagine that when you are in it, you are in it. And so, Carrie, I'm curious. I would love to hear your thought. How do you actually know when it might be the right time to sell a business? You, you've poured so much of yourself and your identity into it. What, what is the moment and how do you actually sense it at the appropriate time? It's a very interesting question. You know, Dave and I have three beautiful children together. And we always like to say that Likeable was like our fourth baby, right? I mean, this we have grown it from just the two of us to a 50 person agency out of New York City. And so, um, you know, we were very and are very attached to it. For me, um, at the time that we sold, I was running the company and Dave had launched a few new businesses. For me, I wanted to sell before I felt that I was done. I wanted to sell before it uh, became frustrating or a drain for me because I kind of felt like if I did that, um, I'd be really miserable with how I said goodbye and how I, if I stayed on for a transition, I wanted to have a sell when I felt that we could find a partner that we could do more with. Um, and when we got to a place where we felt we would be able to extract the value that we deserved for building it over time. So it was a, it was a both a financial decision where we felt like, okay, 
financially, this feels like the right space where it would be enough to justify the years and years of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and then also really like who it would go to and how I could help the company grow because it's it's like a baby. We just sent our oldest baby off to college. It's kind of like a baby you're sending off to college. Like we, we still love you. I'm still here. I'm still a part of you, but you're also growing and doing so much more. And so, so I think it's like, it's that moment when, you know, both, both financially and that, that your baby's ready, it's ready to grow. Yeah, that's, that's really helpful. Thank you, Carrie. That's great. This is Dory Clark. We're here with our weekly interview show on Newsweek Better. And today we're talking with Dave Kirpin and Carrie Kirpin. They are the founders of Likeable Media, and they're talking about how to create a business you can sell. And if you are tuning in here, uh, please type into the chat box your name, where you're dialing in from, and any questions that you have for Dave and Carrie about their experiences building a company that ultimately is able Able to be sold uh, to a great partner. We want to say hi to friends who are tuning in like Katie in Weehawk and DT is here in uh, Rochester. And uh, we have Karen from Boston and many others. So we're glad that you're here. And uh, please feel free to put, put all your questions into the chat box. And uh, Dave, a question that I'm curious about. Now, when you are an entrepreneur, you're, you're just figuring it out uh, by the seat of your pants. Typically, this is this is the process where you're you're learning by doing you're hopefully learning just a few minutes ahead of what is necessary. Uh, how did you actually educate yourself about what the process of a sale might look like? You had spent so much time immersing yourself in how to build a great business, but selling a business is completely different. Where did you even start to begin to, to figure out what that process looked like? Yeah, a uh, great question, Jory. I, I, I think to, to answer the question even more broadly, um, for me, the biggest um, resource in learning, because I didn't know it. I mean, Carrie and I didn't go to school for business. I never took a business class or a communications class. And we built a communications company um, is a peer groups. Um, and uh, for me, EO Entrepreneurs Organization was, was a peer group uh, that we joined early on. Uh, and, and there's been a few others uh, through, through the years, but I would say peer groups, people that have been through similar experiences are such an incredible resource. And so um, to get back to your question, I, I think you know, the, the, the first thing I did was, uh, who can I talk to, uh, ask who can I talk to that have had successful exits and have sold their business? And what mistakes did they make that we can avoid? Right. It's all about learning from other people's mistakes and successes um, in, in order to uh, to to do it, to do it better when when, when we when we uh, have to execute. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that, Dave. And we have uh, some some other great friends tuning in. We want to say hi. Ruben is here from Madrid. We have David from Indianapolis, Beverly from Kansas City and many more joining us. Welcome. And you're all invited to type your questions into the chat box for Dave and Carrie Kirpin about how to create a business that you can sell. Now, Carrie, I know that uh, likable media, um, you know, at it, at its core, it did many things, but um, but it largely was a digital agency, and you had a keen understanding and appreciation for the role that branding and social media plays in a company's reputation and, frankly, in its marketplace value. I am curious how did how did you think about that? For likable, uh, sometimes companies have a you know a cobbler's children problem where uh, it's hard for you know they're so busy building everyone else's brand it's hard for them to think about that. What did you do to build likable's own brand, and how did that factor play in to the courtship process for sales and eventually selling to uh, to another company? Well, I think it's it's a great question. I think the first thing uh, was the name itself and the trademarking of the name. When we named the company Likeable, it was, in fact, when Facebook, you when you were uh, connecting with a brand page, you still became a fan. Like the like button was in its infancy. And so selecting a name that we felt we could own that had a bigger purpose and then trademarking that name was really essential. Then what we really 
looked at was our brand promise and how our company could live up to that brand promise. So at Likeable, we offer faster service because social has to move at the speed of light from the smartest in social. We needed, if we were going to focus on social media, we had to be experts um, with likability guaranteed. So faster service from the smartest in social with likability guaranteed. We had to live up to that on our social channels and our marketing as well. Very early on, Dave uh, set up a daily blog when blogging was tremendous, where our, all of our staff had to contribute as thought leaders. Later, that transformed into meeting people where they were in different networks. And today you'll see we're doing case studies via TikTok. So it, it really is about meeting people where they are, showing that we understand social as it evolves, constantly evolving with it and maintaining a presence. It was, it was essential for us to do that as we grew. And yes, it most certainly played into our exit, building a brand uh, for the agency was extremely important and a major selling point. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. I love that. And a question has just come in from Annette. Annette's in Southern California. And I think this, this cuts to the heart of uh, a challenge that a lot of business owners face. Annette wants to know, how did the transition affect your identity as you exited the, the business or the, the baby off to college season? Um, it must have been a really big change. Uh, I'd actually love to hear from both of you, but Dave, maybe yeah. you can start uh, because I know you are uh, you are doing something different now. You are no longer working in the company. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the identity shift. Yeah, and I'm excited to hear Carrie chat about it too. I think for me, you know, Carrie Carrie is um, is is still is still with the company, you know, on, on her earnout, and and um, I'm not. So for me, you know, Carrie's still likable every day. And, um, and I'm not, I'm completely out. And so I think for me that- You're not likable at all, Dave. I, I'm no longer <laughs> likable. So for me, um, it, it's definitely been an adjustment and it's been hard. I mean, I, I think a, a lot of, I, I, I spent years and years developing the brand, um, you know, personal brand and the professional brand and, and, and books with the word likable in it and all, all sorts of stuff that, that um, is a little different now, and it's, you know I can still be lowercase likable, hopefully. But um, but there, me. there is an adjustment period, and it is um, I think probably again I love Carrie's analogy. Carrie, I, you haven't I haven't heard this analogy before about sending a kid off to college, but I like it. You know, it's um it's um it's still a really important part of my identity that I have a daughter Charlotte, but um but I don't see her every day, and I don't talk to her every day, and that's 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 different. And I think similarly. Um, capital L likable is um, will always be a part of my identity to one degree or another, but it's no longer, you know, it's no longer front and center. That's for sure. And, and that takes some, some uh, adjusting. And yeah. for, to answer that, Dave and I had very different experiences, but you know, Dave's Dave really is completely out. And so his experience was um, different from mine. As you see, I'm wearing it today. I'm in the 10 Pearls office in Washington, D.C. today, randomly. I'm not usually here. I'm wearing my 10 Pearls hat to show, to show my pride um, in the company. And it, it's an adjustment in two ways. I'm still here and I'm still with Likeable, but it is no longer my own. And it is a part of something bigger. And I watched Dave's experience which I think was very difficult. And I think lots of times when there are partners, usually one stays on, whether you're married or you're your business partner, one stays on and one goes. And um, they're both senses of pride and senses of loss. I feel very proud um, with our exit and who we went to. I mean, they're, they're a wonderful company and it's a great experience. And at the same time, there is some loss of not running the show fully anymore. And also, I mean, I haven't had a boss since I'm 29 years old. And I I, I love the founder and leader of 10 Pearls, but it, it is a different adjustment. And that is um, that is a challenge to my identity. So Annette, that's a great question. It, it is a challenge. And it's um, it's one that I relish and that I'm happy we did. It's it's it is, but it's a challenge. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think a lot of people can relate to that. So let's let's home in on that actually. And uh, and Carrie, we can go back back to you for this one. Um, but so there are a lot of possibilities when you are seeking out a yep. uh, a buyer, a suitor for your company. Uh, ultimately, as you mentioned, you uh, settled on a company called Ten Pearls. And I'm curious, 
why why 10 pearls um and how did you know that this would be a good opportunity obviously uh if you're staying on you don't want to lock yourself into something that is a mistake or would be uh, a negative relationship so how do you screen for that and how do you make sure that you are making the right choice in who you are entrusting your baby to this is a great question and i think that dave and i really approached this as a team, but with a, an incredible focus that Dave had of making sure that where we land has to be a place that I can be okay and feel like I'll thrive in, right? So so there was, there was a few different decisions. First of all, the market was very hot. So we had grown um, even in the time of COVID. So we knew that um, people would be looking for companies that were not only able to survive, but thrive. And so when we put ourselves out there, we were really inundated with potential offers for where we could go. And 10 Pearls was not a typical acquirer for us. They were in technology services focused on digital transformation. Um, they were uh, independently owned and self-funded. The founders built it just like we did with like nothing, starting from nothing. Um, and to us, that's what part of what made it so attractive. Like we had a, a basic financial parameter that we knew we wanted to meet. And then once we met that, it became about the culture. And Dave and I both really loved Ten Pearls culture. We love their commitment to gender equity. They have a, a huge, huge offshore team in Pakistan. In Pakistan, 35% of their engineers are female. That's unheard of. They have a deep commitment to philanthropy, all of the things that we valued. And so when we saw that, we felt that it would be a good culture fit in the long term uh, for me to stay on and really help make sure that our baby, who we were sending off, was in the best of hands. And I think that that for me was what it went into the decision. And, and really, um, thanks to Dave for that, because he was very, very focused on the culture, both at Likeable um, and beyond. Yeah, thank you. That's really interesting. This is Dory Clark, and we are here with Newsweek's weekly interview show, Better. And today we're talking with Carrie Kirpin and Dave Kirpin. They are the founders of Likeable Media, and it has recently been acquired by 10 Pearls. And they are talking to us about this question, which uh, many entrepreneurs or potential side gig entrepreneurs are thinking about, which is how to create a business that you can sell. If you are enjoying this conversation, please feel free to hit the like button and hit the share button so that you're speaking of being likable, uh, so that your friends and colleagues can benefit from it. If you want to learn more about Dave and Carrie, uh, check out likable.com. And if you want to make sure that you never miss one of our weekly Newsweek interview shows, uh, go to doryclark.com, sign up for your free self-assessment. You'll join the email list and you will get reminders about our amazing guests. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so so much, Dave. That's great. So Dave, I want to turn to you. Uh, a question came in from, uh, from DT. And I think that this is, uh, that this is a really interesting and useful one. Uh, DT wants to know, what about the impact on employees? Um, so obviously, you and Carrie were putting a, a, a clear priority and a lens on making sure that there would be a good cultural fit. But how do you make sure that when you have, you know, really nurtured a, a family uh, in terms of your company culture that, uh, that the employees will be comfortable and well taken care of. How do you think that through in an acquisition? Well, it was really important to us, as Carrie said. And, um, uh, you know, you can never be 100% certain, right? But I think, I think it's, it's interviews. I, th I think probably the most valuable um, feedback that we got for, for, for the 10 Pearls uh, acquisition specifically was from previous entrepreneurs that were acquired by uh, by Ten Pearls. So, so, so Carrie talked to them to really get a sense of what their experience was and what the impact was on on their employees. And so that it, that allowed us to be, feel really reassured going in that that our employees wouldn't experience any any disruption at all. And um, you know, I remember. Um, when we when we told all of our employees, it was of course bittersweet, um, especially for me. Um, and and we, we basically said, you know, really, truly, nothing whatsoever is changing. 
except I'm, I'm, I'm out, <laughs> but Carrie's here and every, you know, all of your leaders are here and all the culture will, will, will remain and all, all, all the same great perks. And, um, and now, uh, on the other hand, we'll have even more resources to, to do, uh, what it is that we, we want to do and what all the things that we want to get done. So, uh, we were able to, uh, to address it as, as really only, only net positives, Except losing me, but at that point I'm probably a net positive, and um, and 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 we've been able so far certainly to to maintain the great culture that uh, we're very proud of. You know, I, I would say that the, this is a bit of a digression, but the proudest accomplishment that I have as an entrepreneur is is hitting Crane's best places to work uh, five different times with two with two different companies, and and just knowing that um, the, the place where people go to work every day is a place that people are are really happy with. Yeah, that's that's lovely and so important. Thank you for that, Dave. We want to say hi to Daniel, who's joining us from D.C. We have Gail from North Carolina. We have many others tuning in. So welcome. We're glad to have you and your questions. And Carrie, a question that I wanted to, to send your way. Uh, we had a question come in from Ruben. And uh, Ruben is curious, um, what, uh, what are the components that can enable a team to make a company an attractive acquisition target? What are, what are the things that we actually need to be working on and optimizing for if we wanna sell the company one day? Yep, so there are the basic financial metrics, which I think uh, may vary by industry, but typically it's revenue growth and EBITDA, right? You wanna show that a company is profitable and it's, it's able to um, maintain their and grow their profitability, maintain and grow their revenue over time. You always wanna be a company that's growing. Um, or certainly at least sustaining at a, at a high level. Uh, but beyond that, you want a couple things. You wanna make sure that you can show that you have happy customers or clients and happy employees as much as possible. You, you, for us, it was really great that we surveyed both our clients and our employees regularly uh, to make sure that we were meeting the mark. Um, and then the other thing is really having a system that's scalable and repeatable. And for us as an agency, that that becomes challenging to do um, because it's a it's a services business. But we really did a nice job incorporating uh, some sort of scalable, repeatable processes to help ensure that what we did um, was both profitable and teachable to new employees as they came on board. And that was a lot of what made it so successful and, and able to exit in a way that we were proud of. Yeah, very, very interesting. Thank you. For anyone who is working on building their business and structuring it, those are good metrics to be keeping in mind. Now, Dave, we were talking earlier about the fact that Carrie has uh, remained with the company. She's now part of uh, part of 10 Pearls uh, with, you know, running the, the likable arm. You are on to something new and different and exciting. And uh, we have uh, the website we can put up here. And uh, please tell us about Apprentice. What is it you're working on, and uh, and why? Sure. Well, I'll, 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 the why will help me uh, segue. You know, one of the most important things in building a business that's sellable, Dory, is delegating, and it and so many folks struggle with this and uh, need to be or feel they need to be in the weeds, doing everything, selling it, doing it, executing, selling it again. And that's not a that's not a formula for being able to build a, a, a growing company that is sellable. The formula is um, being able to step out and work on the business and hire people, hire great people, and delegate. And the less that you're actually doing, the less that I'm actually doing, the more that I'm delegating, the more successful I can be. So I was very very blessed with uh, uh, throughout the years uh, running Likeable to have terrific terrific help from college students. And I realized I've had probably six or seven college students through the years that would work for me. Then they would come work for me full time after they graduated. And I was able to mold them and teach them. And they ended up doing wonderful things once they joined our company, uh, co-authoring books with me, running marketing for us. Uh, one was the chief of staff helped me fundraise for another venture. And I had, I had this one uh, EA for a couple of years that came to me while he was still in school and said, Dave, I think there's a, a model here. You know, you, I know you've worked with a lot of students and they've learned a lot. I know I've learned a lot and I know that they've provided a lot of value for you. Um, I think there's a model here. And I said, you're totally right. And so we, he became Rob, uh, be, went from being my 
college student EA to being my business partner on Apprentice. And the idea behind Apprentice is that we're a managed marketplace that connects CEOs and entrepreneurs with the best and brightest college students in the world so that so that uh, entrepreneurs can focus on working on the business and and have uh, college students do lots of execution uh, around digital marketing, social media, business development, website development, analytics, and so many more areas. So um, the best way to think about the value prop, Dory, is if, if uh, you were to hire a, a Harvard business student the day they graduated, it would cost you about $100,000. Um, most entrepreneurs and small business owners don't have $100,000 to spend on an, an entry-level employee. But if you hire that same exact person through Apprentice a year before they graduate, you can do it for a very, very small fraction of the cost. So that's what we're doing. And we're, we're growing very, very quickly and on our way, hopefully, towards a terrific outcome uh, one day the way we had uh, with like. Ah, that's fantastic. Well, it's a great resource to know about. Thank you for that, Dave. Apprentice sounds awesome. And we are beginning to wind things down here. We probably have time for one more question, and I wanted to send it uh, to you, Carrie. So you've now been been through the arc of, of this process. I am sure that you have learned a lot about how to sell a business. Uh, maybe there's things that you would you know definitely do again, things that you would probably not do again. As you think back, on younger Carrie, or as you think back on other people who might be, uh, it is a similar stage to where you were uh, a while ago, who are contemplating selling their business in the future. What would your advice be? What are your sort of top uh, lessons learned or advice about how to uh, really maximize the chances for a positive outcome? Okay, so if I were, I'm going to start early, and then get towards the later progression. If I were to start to really young carry, I would say take risks as early as you can because you're the, the earlier in life you do this, the more unencumbered you are by life and children and all kinds of things. And, and you're more free, you know, when you're young, you know, take a risk and go for it. And even when you're not, take a risk and go for it. You don't, you don't get the reward without the, taking that risk. And I think I was always pretty risk averse and um, had to be sort of dragged as a reluctant entrepreneur. And, um, and I would tell myself to take much bigger risks. Um, the other thing, uh, I, as I've got closer to exit, is most of us who start businesses don't start businesses because we are financial experts. We start businesses because we have an idea that we're passionate about. We want to change the world. We want to solve a problem. Get comfortable with understanding financial terms. Get comfortable with find someone you trust. Ask a million questions through the process. I think there were a lot of things that we could have done better. I think we did a great job. But I think there's a lot of things that now, in retrospect, if I were to do this again, I would know. And the only way you know is really from doing. But if you're unafraid to ask questions, don't be afraid of looking dumb. Like just find someone who you can ask these questions to and really understand. Okay, what's explain exactly what working capital is to me. Okay, explain exactly what this piece means on this cash flow. Because we you don't always know. And I I mean we were self-taught, so we have no idea. So I think that's really, really important. Um, and then the last thing I would say is. Don't just think about uh, um, being acquired, think about acquiring. I've been so inspired by 10 Pearl's growth through acquisition and organic. You know, watching uh, this incredible founder identify the right businesses to acquire. And, and now that I've seen it, this goes back to the taking risks earlier. Now that I've seen it, it's so much easier than I kind of, it, it's a risk, but it's a really good, smart risk. And so get comfortable, not just with acquisition being acquired, but start thinking about who you might acquire. It's it's not that hard to do. There's lots of ways to do it. I love it. I love the reframe. That's so powerful. We, we don't just have to be gobbled up. We can gobble. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this is Dory Clark. We have been here with Carrie Kirpin and Dave Kirpin. They are the founders of Likeable Media. You can learn more at likeable.com. If you want to make sure you tune in every Thursday and learn all about our amazing guests, uh, including next week, we're talking with Melinda Emerson about how to start your own business. Uh, go to doryclark.com. You can sign up and get updates and reminders. And uh, we're so glad to have you here, Dave and Carrie. Uh, thank you for being here. 
Thank Thanks you so much for that. having us, Jory. And uh, uh, super excited. If anyone has any questions today, tomorrow, forever, I'm very easily reachable on social media. That's wonderful. Not as successful. Dave is amazing, though. He really responds to everyone. I am slower. He's much faster than I am. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it's a great offer. And I know uh, a lot of uh, you've answered a lot of people's questions today and uh, really made a difference. So thank you very much, Dave and Carrie. Thank you for everyone uh, for tuning in and we'll see you next Thursday.